how many prime numbers are there? Well, easy. There are infinitely many prime numbers, and we've known this for over 2,000 years, thanks to Euclid's theorem. But really, how many prime numbers are there? Meaning, if I give you an interval, say between two and a million, how many prime numbers do you expect in that interval? How about between 10 million and 11 million? How many prime numbers are there in that interval? Well, this is exactly the content of what we call the prime number theorem. It tells you how many primes we should expect in that interval. How about we ask the same question, but from a probability point of view? If I give you some number, some very large number with 100 digits, what is the probability that that number is prime? Or if I give you 10 numbers in a row, what is the probability that there is a prime number among those 10 numbers? Well, it turns out that the prime number theorem essentially also gives you the answer to this question. This is the statement of the prime number theorem, which is a theorem about the prime counting function. So the prime counting function pi of x is the number of primes that are less or equal to x. So for example, pi of 10 will be 4 because the prime numbers below 10 are 2, 3, 5, and 7. Now, the prime number theorem roughly says that pi of x, the prime counting function, can be approximated by x divided by the natural log of x. This is saying that these two functions are about of the same order of magnitude. There is an error between the two of them, but they are roughly the same quantity. And more precisely, what the theorem says is that pi of x and x over log of x are asymptotically the same function, meaning that the limit of the quotient of the two functions goes to 1. But for our purposes to just get an idea of how many primes are there in an interval, we can use this as an approximation for the number of primes. So pi of a million will be about a million divided by the natural log of a million. The prime number theorem can be interpreted in terms of probability as the following statement. It says that the probability that x is prime is about 1 over log of x. So the probability that a larger and larger number is prime decreases with the size of the number in this way. To explain that probabilistic interpretation of the prime number theorem, here is an equivalent formulation of the prime number theorem. Pi of x, the prime counting function, is approximately, asymptotically, this other function, which is the logarithmic integral, the integral from 2 to x of 1 over log of t dt. This function, by the way, gives you better values that approximate how many primes are there up to x. And now we can use this formulation of the prime number theorem to interpret the prime number theorem as a probability. Let's suppose for the moment that the probability that a number n is prime is 1 over log of n. Then what is the expected number of primes in the interval from 2 to x? Well, it will be the expected value of how many primes are there in that interval from 2 to x, and that expected value will be the probability that 2 is prime, plus the probability that 3 is prime, plus the probability that 4 is prime, and that will be the sum of 1 over log of 2, plus 1 over log of 3, plus 1 over log of 4, etc., so the sum from 2 to x of 1 over log of n. But see, that sum is an approximation of the integral from 2 to x of 1 over log of t dt, which by the prime number theorem is asymptotic to pi of x, to the actual number of primes from 2 to x. So if you run that argument backwards, the prime number theorem, or this integral in particular, can be interpreted as a probability or as an expected value of the number of primes from 2 to x if you assume that the probability that n is prime is 1 over the log of n.